Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna talk about four ways we self-sabotage our own confidence. Sometimes we are our own worst enemies when it comes to confidence. We can think that it's outside things that are affecting our confidence, which sometimes it can be, but oftentimes our worst enemy is ourselves and the way we talk to ourselves and our mind and how that affects how we interact in the world. So I wanted to share these four ways that are very practical. I've been working on some of them recently or just like realizing that I need to work on some of these recently. So I hope that they are encouraging to you. The first way we self-sabotage our own confidence, and this is the recent thing I've been working on, is not putting ourselves together and dressing nicely to go out and about and run errands or whatever we're doing out in the world. How many times have we done all done this exact scenario? We are dressed maybe in our sweatpants, we haven't done anything to ourselves, but we need to go to the grocery store and just get one thing and we're like, I don't wanna put myself together. I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just gonna run and do this real quick. And then of course, of all days, that is the day when we end up seeing like 10 people we know at the store and we're not feeling real great about ourselves after all those um, interactions with people because we know, wow, I don't look that great today. Now this, I don't want to make anyone feel bad with this point. If you dress very casual, maybe you don't like to wear makeup, maybe you're just more chill and in your upkeep of yourself and this doesn't bother you. This is, then just keep doing what you're doing. This is for women that genuinely would like to look nice and be put together, but let's be honest, what's the real reason we don't do this? I know for me, it's a lack of discipline. That's the root issue here. We don't wanna be disciplined. We don't wanna take the time to put ourselves together. So we self-sabotage our own confidence by going out and about and not feeling great about ourselves. I think today in our world, we're very casual. We're very laid back in our, what is um, kind of like appropriate for wearing out. Like anything goes pretty much. I mean, you can wear your pajama pants, you can wear whatever going out, but I think, if this is bothering you, then it's something for us to be aware of. Like, okay, I'm gonna try to take some time to put myself together. And sometimes that's going to be work and it's gonna require discipline and effort for me to do my hair, for me to put on a nicer outfit than something that is just mainly comfortable and convenient to wear. I'm going to take that time so that in my interactions with people when I go out and about, I just feel more confident about myself. So try it out, let me know what you think and if this helps your confidence. Number two, way that we self-sabotage our own confidence is we put ourselves in a box and we limit ourselves to trying new things, to branching out, because often the real reason is we're afraid of failure. And that is, I know in my life, has been rooted in pride. Pride of not wanting to fail, not wanting to look bad, not wanting to not be great at something right away. What gives us the ability to try new things, to not be afraid of failing is humility of saying like, it's okay if I fail, it's okay if other people see me fail because I'm trying something new and that's just gonna go along the road of trying new things out. So don't limit yourself. If there's something that you wanted to try doing, give it a try. You never know if you're gonna like it until you actually try it and maybe it will grow your confidence if you just take those first few steps to try something new. Okay, the number three way that we self-sabotage our own confidence is when it comes to our physical body. How often do we we make ourselves be more underconfident by focusing on the physical traits of ourselves that we don't like or the imperfections that we all have, right? All of us have imperfections. We focus more on that than celebrating the strengths that we have, celebrating the, the areas that we do like about ourselves. And I don't want this to turn into, listen to me here, it's not about loving ourselves or you know, looking at ourselves in the mirror and saying, I love myself. I love this about me. Like I, I'm beautiful. Like, I don't think that's necessarily the mindset we should have as a Christian woman. I think this is the right way to do it. Instead of beating ourselves up about the things we don't like, how about start being thankful to God for the gifts and the strengths he's given us in our physical appearance. And even sometimes in the things that we don't love about ourselves, there is something we could find to be grateful for and thankful to the Lord in, in that area. 
For example, I've always struggled in my confidence over being more smaller busted, flatter chested, but there are some incredible benefits of being this way. One, I don't have to really worry about how I exercise. Like I don't deal with aches and pains in my bus with exercising. Two, um, I don't have to worry about cleavage showing. Those are things I can genuinely be thankful for instead of just focusing on the things I don't like. Number four way that we self-sabotage our own confidence. And this is something that I have just scratched the surface and, and it relates a lot to our mental health. So if you struggle with anxiety, I think you'll relate to this a lot. Um, it's not something I've found quite a solution to yet. If you have tips on this area, let me know. But I know that I self-sabotage my own confidence when I overthink things, when I overthink interactions, when I pers personalize things so much to myself when it comes to interactions with others. And I realize the root of that often is being too self-focused. You know, it's when we overthink things. Oh, did I say the right thing? Did I, what if they interpreted this wrong? Or, oh, that person interacted a little weird. Like, does this person not want to hang out with me because they don't like me? Oh, maybe there's something wrong with me. Why do people not like me? It's like this rabbit trail we go down on of overthinking and over-personalizing everything, turning every situation and scenario into this big old thing where it's like all about ourselves. You're not gonna be perfect in every interaction you have with people, okay? We can only do the best we can and then we learn from those scenarios and how to interact in the future. And when it comes to over-personalizing things, we have to remind ourselves that every, not everyone's negative reaction to us is about us. Like everyone's dealing with their own issues, their own trials, their own struggles. So if someone's unkind to us or says something different or maybe doesn't respond to an invitation we've invited them to, it's not always about us. If we go into interactions with other people as a, as focusing on them, how can I love this person? When I go to church on Sunday, how can I serve people? Like how can I be there for other people? Then I think we get less in our minds, in our in this trap of overthinking things when we're genuinely looking for opportunities of how God wants us to love and serve others and be there for other people. And also giving people the grace that we want to receive from them as well. Sometimes we can be so hard on people. Why did they say that? Why did they do that? We want grace for our hard days, for times when we maybe don't interact the best with other people or there's underlying issues. You know, there were... There's been times over my struggle with anxiety where I felt like I didn't have energy to get together with people and I still have to be very protective of my time with people. Well, I don't want people to think when I say I can't get together with them, oh, she must not like me. She must not want to hang out with me. I want people to have, you know, give me the benefit of the doubt. So we have to give that to other people. And all I can say is if you have tips on this, let me know in the comments below. But I think it comes down to Going back to number one, the point of discipline. I think it comes down to disciplining our minds and how we choose to think about scenarios and not going down those rabbit trails. And if we're struggling about something, praying about it. If we're worried about our interaction with somebody, praying about it. And God will reveal what we need to know, I think. And um, focusing on loving and serving people really helps us get out of that trap, I think. So those are four ways I think we self-sabotage our own confidence as women. I will see you guys next week. Talk to y'all soon. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.